Welcome back to the channel. So this is the final update for the Power Pass FTMO challenge. So today is Thursday the 29th of September and yesterday was our final day of trading on this challenge. So I have received the account analysis which I will go through in this video and we'll see exactly how we got on during this 200k FTMO challenge. So you can see immediately here that we did trade 16 days overall. Obviously there is a minimum of 10 trading days with any FTMO challenge. In total, we opened 1,262 positions, which is an average of 78.9 positions per day. So our win rate overall was just under 69%. And overall, we did finish the account in profit. So you can see there, just under $500 made in the 16 days that we were trading. So we have a look at the balance curve here. If you didn't see the last video, what we did is we did actually start by trading gold. So you can see we did make some good progress. We hit the equity protector. We continued to trade gold. Again, we made good progress, but the equity protector was hit again. After trading gold, we did move to a Forex set and you can see that is a lot more steady growth. We did hit the equity protector a couple of times, but overall you can see the equity growth isn't as sharp as it is when we trade gold. Obviously gold is usually a lot more volatile to trade and you can see that's why we have these steep ups and downs. Whereas with Forex, we do have a lot more of a gradual build. And as I say, overall, we did close in profit on this account. If you look at the statistics, you can see, as I say, just under $500 made, a win rate of 69.7%. Average profit was at $38 and an average loss at 86. Our biggest winning trade was $557, with our biggest losing trade being at just under 2,000. So if we look at the comparison between our buys and sells, you can see we did actually take more buys during our challenge. With a losing result, so we lost nearly 7,000 in our buys. But with sells, we did take 618 sells, and they actually left us in a profit of 7,478. Win rate is very similar on both buys and sells, so 69.72% with our buys, and then a 69.74 with sells. Our average profit was higher in sales, so you can see there just under $40, whereas we made 37 on buys. Our average profit of our sales was actually higher, so you can see $39.22 made on our sales. $37.37, our average profit when we were in buys. This is another good feature of the trading analysis once you've completed a challenge on FTMO. You can actually see the results by day, so if you were losing on a particular day, for example, Friday, as we know, Friday can be very volatile in the markets. You could just eliminate Fridays from all trading, especially if you are backed up by this graph. So basically, if this is telling you that every Friday you are losing money, it might be worth considering not trading Fridays anymore. Same for Mondays as well. However, Mondays were profitable. Our least profitable day was actually on a Thursday. Now that might not necessarily be week by week. It might We might have just hit an equity protector on a Thursday and that means that was our least profitable day. Now there isn't always necessarily news on a Thursday but there might have been when we hit the equity protector. Most of the news tends to be on a Friday but obviously Thursday hasn't worked quite well for us but that's okay. And then you can see here the different pairs that we are trading. So as I say we did start trading gold at the start of this challenge. Then we moved into a Forex set and you can see those different pairs here. So AUD, USD, Euro USD, GU, USD CAD, USD CHF, UJ and gold as well. Our most profitable pair was actually USD CHF, which you can see there, $2,726 made. Our least profitable Forex pair was USD CAD. Least profitable overall was gold. So as I say, you can make a lot of money on gold. You can also lose a lot. It is a very volatile market. And there again is a graph to illustrate what these statistics are telling you. And then you can see your trading days analysis as well. So how many positive versus negative days you've had. All that information is on there. So we did have 11 positive days and then five negative days out of the 16 days that we were trading overall. And then you can see results by lot size as well. So basically this will tell you what your most profitable lot sizes were. Now the lot sizes, as you can see, have varied throughout the challenge. Now the reason for that is Pow are constantly reviewing how your account is looking and they are making changes to your lot size based on the target of that account. So for instance, if you are nearly securing the retry and you've only got a few days left, it wouldn't be wise to push the account too much to try and get, you know, to make the profit target or try and get an extension. If you can just play it a bit more safe and just push for the retry. So you can see some of these smaller lot sizes here these were taken because my account was nearly at a retry stage with a few days left and it worked out for me to push me to get into that retry. If we would have been taking trades like this, especially on gold, then we might have 
maybe we would push and got the extension if we were lucky, or it could have gone the other way and we could have actually lost our account, even though we were close to getting that retry. But as I say, they are reviewing your account regularly and they are looking at the different approaches that they can use. They also let you know in a Telegram group what's going on with your account and what the updates may be. So once you buy a Pal Pass, they will put you into a Telegram group and they will also let you know what their approach is going to be. So if it is going to change, they will tell you in that group and that helps you be aware of why your account is trading a certain way. You can also see the results by trade duration as well. So how long you're actually in those trades. So our least profitable trade duration was between six and 12 hours. 12 hours plus wasn't good either. So basically if you're in trades for quite a long time, hoping that the market reverses in your direction, it doesn't always necessarily do that, which means that for us on this occasion, anything longer than six hours tended to be least profitable. Most profitable was in half an hour to one hour trade duration. You can also see results by open hour as well. So this will help you if you are only looking to trade certain sessions and you don't know what sessions will might be most profitable for you. By looking at this, it will let you know the best times when you have traded on this account. So say if you were most profitable in the London session, maybe you'd consider only turning your EA on during that London session. And if you were least profitable during the Asian session, then maybe don't trade that session. So it is useful to have this information because then you can start maybe making decisions as to how to tweak your EA to make it run the best for you. But obviously that is only if you are using the Pal Banker EA and you are trying to find the best approach for yourself. If you are using Pal Pass, you don't change any of the settings, you don't take any trades, you just let Pal Pass trade the account for you. You could look at all this information and structure a plan around it. And then next month, the markets may be completely different. But even still, it is good just to see this information just to help you along a little bit if you are maybe considering changing this EA slightly or only running it during certain sessions or whatever it may be. And at the bottom here is our final evaluation. So as I say, minimum of 10 trading days and we've traded for 16. Max daily loss of 10,000 and we hit minus $7,050. Max loss overall of 20,000, we hit minus 4.7. And a profit target of 20,000 and we made just under $500, which means that we have secured the retry for this account. I have already been emailed my new login details for the challenge, which basically if you do want to go for a retry, you just send them over to the team at Power Pass. So obviously I have paid that fee previously to Power Pass in order to try and pass this challenge. No further fees have been taken at this point because you do get free retries to try and get you through. And also, as you know, with FTMO, if you don't break any of these rules and you are in profit at the end of your challenge, you do get a free retry as well, which means that I haven't spent any more money on Pal Pass or this challenge since my first initial payment for both of those things. So that is it then. This is the end of the challenge. As I say, I have sent over my retry details to the team at Pal Pass. I will be trying this again and I'll hopefully get through next time. There has been an update that's gone out in the group today saying that the next challenges will be taken with the new EA. So basically it's an update on the previous versions. It's now version seven of the Pal Banker and there may be a different approach that we are running during the next challenge. But I will be documenting our next challenge as well just to show you how we got on. So I will leave this video here for now. I just wanted to show you how we got on on our final day and what we're going to do next. If you do have any questions at all, please just let me know in the comments and thanks very much for watching.